This is the Lou Rockwell Show. Well, you know, if we think of the National Security Agency for a moment, it's portrayed as this heroic bunch of people in uh, uh, north of Washington who are watching out for terrorists and other bad guys and protecting, uh, you know, the homeland from all uh, all the alleged bad guys and maybe real bad guys in the rest of the world. But as, you, as you're pointing out, it actually serves a very different role, or at least partially a different role, for the corporate state. Yeah, you know, my... my uh... <laughs> My take on both the National Security Agency and the CIA, and, and incidentally, since then, I've known a lot of people who've been pretty high up in, in either or or both of those organizations, uh, that they, their pri- primary job is to further uh, U.S. corporate interests, or let's call it multinational corporate interests, in fact. It's not just U.S.-based anymore. We've got companies like Halliburton, which officially are not U.S. anymore. But the CIA and the National Security Agency uh, devote a tremendous amount of effort money, energy, uh, to doing things that help corporate interests abroad, including making sure that the, that the right people are uh, running c- countries that have resources that our corporations want, uh, bribing them, uh, making sure that they stay in position, and even uh, arranging for them to be taken out of office, either through coups or assassination by people that we call the jackals, uh, if they if they stand up against the corporations and say, okay, no more oil drilling in our country, no more uh, mineral extraction by uh, multinationals, if something like that happens, uh, they don't last very long. Well, you know, if, uh, again, this is really a fascist state, isn't it, the American state? Too many Americans think of the U.S. government as sort of spreading faith, hope, and charity abroad, when actually, no matter who is the president, who is at the top of the regime, the sort of the corporate state moves on and sees itself as in charge of every other country. Well, you know, Lou, I, I think it's it's fair to say that, that I believe that we're at a time in history that's unique. And perhaps it's, it's most similar to the time when the city-states became nations, except today the nations have become somewhat irrelevant and presidents have become irrelevant. Well, where we're at now is a is 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 a is a global economy, a global geopolitics that's really controlled by big corporations. Um, during most of my lifetime, we might have envisioned the globe as being this place with roughly 200 countries, of which a few had a lot of power: the Soviet Union, the United Kingdom, the United States at various times. But today, I think you might better envision. Uh, this uh, you still got a globe with roughly 200 countries, but huge clouds drifting around the planet, uh, and these are the big corporations. They know no national borders. Uh, they don't follow any specific sets of laws. They form partnerships with the Chinese and the Taiwanese and the Tibetans, with the Israelis and the Arab countries. Whoever has the resources or markets that they covet. Uh, that's who they sidle up to and take control of as much as they can. And so we're really at a time in history, unlike any other, uh, where nations have become pretty much irrelevant. Do you mean nations or do you mean nation states? I mean, I must say I always think of government as being an incredibly stupid institution. The people who are just the nature of a bureaucracy is very stupid. And whenever government is doing something, virtually always for evil, some smart guys in private corporations who are who are involved in uh, coming up with the idea and helping helping bring it about. And, and you were brought in as a young man into this a very important New England consulting firm that virtually nobody's ever heard of. Well, uh, n- nobody's ever heard of it outside the business. But believe me, people in the business knew Charles D. Main very well. We had about 2,000 uh, consultants at the time. I was chief economist there and, and, and one of the owners, one of the partners in the firm. We were extremely well known by the World Bank and the USAID and the National Security Agency and the CIA and others. So we were we were well known in those circles, but not well known in the general public uh, by intention. You know, if we think about the USAID, a lot of naive people think of U.S. foreign aid as being the equivalent of charity. When of course it's at the USAID is actually a branch of the CIA or closely connected to the CIA, isn't it? Or the whole national security establishment. Yeah, think of U.S. AID, Agency for International Development, as a charitable organization, is uh, yeah, that's certainly totally erroneous. Uh, for the most part, our foreign aid, U.S. foreign aid, like that of most countries, uh, is out there to serve the interests of U.S. corporations and now multinational corporations. There are small amounts of aid that really go to helping people, particularly when there are times of catastrophe. We send tents and, and food and water to help people that are, uh, you know, 
destroyed, uh, their lives are destroyed by earthquakes or by tsunamis or something. But that's pretty minuscule and only lasts for a very, very short time. And then after that, the aid that we send in to help these countries is primarily there to help the corporations. That's the job of USAID and and uh, the Export-Import Bank and the World Bank and, and other similar organizations. I can remember when I was on Capitol Hill, working on Capitol Hill the first time that I attended a uh, the hearings for the foreign aid bill, one might have thought that Mother Teresa was going to be testifying, but of course it was Gen- <laughs> General Electric and Westinghouse and Caterpillar and and similar companies that are so close that are part of the corporate state. I mean, they're connected to the government in a uh, in a corporatist relationship. And so, what an eye opener! What an eye opener that was for you, Lou. Huh? <laughs> so, <laughs> this is our wonderful government and its and, it, and its adjuncts. You know, and we did a lot of things, but I think probably the, the the generic version is that we would identify a country with resources that, that our, the corporations covet, like oil, and then arrange a huge loan to that country from the World Bank or one of its sister organizations, USAID or Inter American Development Bank. Hmm. But the money would never actually go to that country. Instead, it would go to our own corporations to build big infrastructure projects in that country, power plants, uh, industrial parks, highways, things that would benefit a few wealthy families in that country, but not the majority of the people, uh, because the majority of the people couldn't afford electricity, they didn't have cars to drive on the highways, industrial parks don't hire many people anyway. So the wealthy people would benefit, mostly our own corporations would benefit, and then the country would be ho- left holding a huge debt that it couldn't repay. And at that point, we've basically got them. You know, they, they become our slaves, the country. We can say, you know, you owe us a lot of money. You can't pay your debts, so sell your oil to us real cheap without any environmental restrictions. Vote with us on a, on a critical United Nations vote. Let us build a military base on your soil. And in the few instances where uh, the leaders of these countries didn't go along with us, and I talk in my books about how Jaime Roldos, the democratically elected president of Ecuador, uh, refused to buy into these deals. He had a lot of integrity, and Omar Torrijos of Panama, likewise. I couldn't bring them around. I couldn't corrupt them. Uh, in these instances, the jackals go in, and they either overthrow governments or assassinate them. Both Roldos of Ecuador and, and Torrijos of Panama were assassinated uh, because they, they didn't buy into the deal. Just last year, uh, President Zelaya, democratically elected president of Honduras, was was overthrown because he wouldn't buy into the deals that Chiquita Dole, Kraft, and Russell Athletic wanted him to buy into. It's continuing to happen. I want to urge everybody to take a look at John Perkins' books. Take a look at johnperkins.org. Take a look especially at Confessions of an Economic Hitman. 